Hello. Plasmid cloning vectors are widely used in recombinant DNA technology. They are the simplest form of vectors. In this session, I am going to talk about PBR322, which is a plasmid cloning vector and one of the first perfect vectors we have ever used. Before that, what are the ideal characteristics of a plasmid cloning vector? Uh, or how do you evaluate a plasmid cloning vector based on its features? So I would say the plasmid cloning vectors or any other vectors should be autonomously replicating. It should have the ability to replicate autonomously. How to replicate autonomously? It should have the sequence which actually begins or initiate the replication of that DNA. So that's the origin of replication. So all type of vectors except the insertional vectors, it should have the origin of replication. Origin of replication is the site of DNA from where the DNA replication begins. So all the plasmid cloning vectors will have a origin of replication. And the host range of the particular plasmid vector is actually determined by the characteristics of the origin of replication. Secondly, the molecular weight. Most of the plasmid cloning vectors are transformed into the uh, bacterial cells or other, any other type of cells depending on the molecular weight. So if you are using uh, the calcium chloride method or any other simple methods for transformation, that the maximum amount of DNA that can be transformed into a cell is 10 kilobase pairs. So uh, the carrying capacity or the, cap uh, the uh, size of genome that can be carried in a plasmid cloning vector uh, is limited by 10 kilobase pairs. So the total size, the uh, foreign DNA plus the vector DNA should be 10 kilo base space. It's an approximate calculation. If you are using some viral vectors or viral mediated gene transfer or any other advanced techniques, you can actually transfer high amount of DNA. But if you are using the calcium chloride method uh, or the simple methods, which is commonly used for the uh, plasmid cloning vectors, the maximum size is uh, around 10 kilo base space. So if the if your plasmid vector is 5 kilo base pairs, it can carry another 5 kilo base pairs. So the total will be 10 kilo base pair. But if the, your plasmid is 8 kilo base pair, uh, it can only, only carry 2 kilo base pair. So depending on the size of the plasmid vector, you can evaluate, you can say how much amount of DNA it can carry. And uh, third point is uh, a plasmid cloning vector should have readily selectable phenotypic traits. It should, it should infer some characteristics into the bacteria so that you can identify the bacteria which is transformed with the vector and that, uh, specifically the bacteria which is having the recombinant plasmid. So you should be able to distinguish uh, between the bacteria which is not transformed and the bacteria which is transformed. The transformed, once uh, it gets the plasmid, it should have some extra phenotypes or readily selectable phenotypes or scorable, screenable uh, phenotypes. Plus, it should have, we should be able to distinguish between the cell which is get, got the plasmid and the one which got the recombinant plasmid. So what we need, what we need to look uh, at uh, is the bacterial cells which actually got the plasmid with the foreign DNA. So uh, the plasmid should have the characteristics or genes uh, which actually help, the, help us to see or help us to select the cells which is actually transformed with the recombinant plasmid. Finally, uh, it should have unique restriction endonuclease recognition site. So uh, to this restriction endonuclease sites, we are inserting our foreign DNA. So it should have unique site. That means the plasmid should have only one restriction endonuclease site uh, for one particular enzyme. If the plasmid is having multiple sites for uh, one enzyme, it should be fragmented when we are using this recombinant uh, this restriction endonuclease. Suppose if a plasmid is having two sites which is recognized by the echo R1, if you add the echo R1, it will be cut into pieces. And uh, most of these plasmid cloning vectors are circular in nature, so we want only to cut in one specific region. So these are the parameters or the characteristics uh, by which we are evaluating a uh, properties of a uh, plasmid cloning vectors, the autonomous replication, low molecular weight, readily selectable markers, and the unique restriction endonuclease recognition sites. So one of the classic uh, plasmid cloning vector is PBR322. It is one of the most widely used vector and in initial stages it was very much used for molecular biology experiments as well as for the cloning experiment. In this video, I am going to talk about the PBR322.
as I said, it's a classical vector. Uh, it is widely used. Uh, it's, it was used as a model system for the prokaryotic transcription and the translation related studies. It has contributed very much to the basic molecular biology. Uh, then it is studied for, uh, it is used for studying DNA topology. Uh, it was actually created in 1977, one of the initial uh, phase of recombinant DNA technology and uh, it was uh, one of the classical vectors. So it was a perfect vector, I would say. So the name PBR322, P we used to write in small letters. It stands for plasmid because it is also a from a plasmid. And BR is actually uh, the names of the creators. Uh, the creators are Bolivar and Rodriguez. So their first names were given. And 322 is actually the serial number. They have made uh, so many, they have done so many experiments, so many combinations. At last, they got the PBR322, maybe their 322nd experiment, they made this particular vector. That's why it's named as PBR322. So that's the serial number uh, they have given during their experiment. So you can see the Bolivar and Rodriguez here. And this is a vector. And you should remember that this is how we represent or a plasmid cloning vector or any other cloning vectors. So it's a circular vector you can see in the middle the name is written and the size is written. The size is 4361 base space not KB base space. Uh, so approximately 4.4 4 .4 kilo base space. So the carrying capacity we can be cal we can calculate it from that because the Total capacity will be 10 kilo base space. So the plasmid itself is 4.4. So it can actually carry about 5.6 kilo base space of DNA. So 4.4 plus 5.6 will be 10. So the total size should be 10. Then only we can go for this calcium chloride or any other simple method of transformation. So that's the carrying capacity of this vector. And we used to write the name in the middle of the vector. Okay. Then uh, origin of replication and rope. Uh, we have seen this origin of replication and rope in the coal even plasmid. This PBR322 got its origin of replication and rope region, which is actually controlling the origin uh, replication uh, from the coal even plasmid. Okay, so it's a coal even derived uh, vector. Okay, so then we have two different uh, selection markers. Uh, so selectable markers including ambicillin resistant gene and a tetracycline resistant gene. This vector is commonly used for Escherichia coli. Normally, the Escherichia coli is sensitive to, to ambicillin. That means if you add ambicillin to the medium, they will die. Uh, same with the tetracycline. Tetracycline is an antibiotic. If you add tetracycline to the medium, the cell will die. But if uh, the bacteria is having this particular plasmid, uh, they are resistant. So if the Escherichia coli, the normal Escherichia coli, if that, uh, that Escherichia coli is getting this ambicillin resistant gene, it will produce beta lactamase, the enzyme which is actually cleaving the penicillin or ambicillin. So uh, this bacteria with the help of this gene, they will be able to cleave or degrade the ambicillin into harm harmless compounds and they will be able to survive. So if the bacteria is having this plasmid, they will be resistant to ambicillin and resistant to tetracycline. So if you add the medium, uh, if you add this antibiotic into the medium, the Escherichia coli will not die because they have the genes, they have the resistant genes. By using this resistant genes, uh, we are actually um, actually uh, like uh, selecting the uh, bacterial cells which is actually got this uh, plasmid. We can distinguish the bacteria with plasmid and without plasmid by looking at their uh, resistant properties. Okay, we can actually done the experiment by adding this antibiotic into the medium. So if they are able to survive, uh, they have the plasmid. If they don't have the plasmid, they will die. So that's a simple method of uh, screening. So oh, one more thing, they have multiple uh, restriction endonuclease recognition site. You can see the echo R1 will cut here and it will cut only here. So only one echo R1 recognition site. They have the BAM H1 recognition site uh, inside the tetracycline gene. So this blue one is the tetracycline gene. The arrow indicated the direction of translation. This arrow is actually indicating the direction of translation. The ORI arrow is indicating the direction of replication. Rope uh, is producing a RNA, so it's the transcription uh, direction is given. Anyway, the BAMH1 uh, recognition site is within the tetracycline resistant gene and the PSG recognition site is within the ambicillin resistant gene. So the origin of replication, as I said before, it is derived from coal even plasmid and it is a high copy number plasmid. Uh, 
uh, it used to have 15 to 20 copies of the plasmid in the cell and we can increase the copy number by adding chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol is actually uh, affecting the protein synthesis in the cell. So if it prevents the protein synthesis, it will prevent the replication of the DNA, the genomic DNA. But the plasmid DNA continues to replicate. So that's what we call the chloramphenicol amplification of the plasmid. So the normal copy number of PBR322 is between 15 to 20. But if you add chloramphenicol into the medium in very low quantities, it will amplify the plasmid DNA uh, to 200 fold that means it will have a huge copy number uh, within the cell okay so the plasmid number can be increased by chloramphenicol amplification but usually it is 15 to 20 base base it has antibiotic resistant gene as i said before this act as a selectable marker uh, so the pbr322 is having ampicillin resistant gene as well as the tetracycline resistant gene it has cloning site in the previous figure, I have shown only three cloning sites, but actually it is having 40 different unique recession in the nucleus recognition site. Out of this 40, 11 are in the tetracycline gene, 6 are in the ampicillin resistant gene, and their specific sites are there. The PSG1 in the ampicillin resistant gene can be used for homopolymeric tailing, and HIN31 is actually in the promoter. It's in the tetracycline gene, resistant gene is actually in the promoter, so it can be uh, used for uh, like expression vector but basically the PBR322 is a cloning vector. It won't express the protein but it can amplify the protein. I think you know the difference. Oh this is a full image. <laughs> At first I don't want to uh, like uh, show this much complicated image but actually the uh, PBR322 is having 40 different recession endonuclease nucleus recognition site. Actually you can find some of the here we have the P PSG1 then HIN31 is here and the CoR1 uh, if you take a close look, the numbering is actually starting from here. From the core one, uh, uh, it's actually the one and then the nucleotides are uh, named like this. Okay, So, so many antibiotics recognition sites are there. Uh, so, this PBR322 is actually an artificially created DNA, but it is not uh, really the, uh, totally uh, created from, uh, uh, it is not actually totally created artificially. It's actually derived from three different vectors. The three different portions of the PBR322 is actually derived from three different vectors. The origin of replication and uh, ROP region is derived from PMB1. PMB1 is a coliban plasmid, so origin of replication is from PMB1. Uh, PMB1 is a class of coliban plasmid. We have different uh, types of or different subtypes of the coliban plasmid. So PR, PMB1 is contributing the origin of replication and ROP region. The ampicillin resistant gene is actually derived from RSF2124 and tetracycline resistant gene is from PSC101. So the P PBR322 is a combination of these three plasmids. We are taking one gene from one plasmid, another gene from another plasmid and the of replication from the uh, PMB1, M1. So that's how we create a artificially uh, plasmid. So the genes were there, we don't actually created the gene, we don't created the ampicillin resistant gene or tetracycline resistant gene, we are actually deriving it from multiple sources. So that's how we make the uh, plasmid uh, and it is very effective way. So what we will do, uh, I just want to remom remind you, we will cut the vector with a recession nucleus and we will also cut the DNA fragment with a uh, recession nucleus and finally we will add, uh, mix both of them together, the vector and the foreign DNA, then add the DNA ligase so it will be ligated. Then we will go for uh, the uh, transformation and same thing is applicable for the PBR322. So this is our the PBR322 which has a foreign DNA. The red color is actually indicating the foreign DNA. So we are transforming this foreign DNA into the Escritia coli. The, this process, the cutting of DNA, cutting of the vector, cutting of the foreign DNA and the combination, these processes are not 100% complete process. If you add the recession endonuclease to the vectors, not all recession endonu vectors will be cut. Some of them will uh, will escape from the recession endonuclease or they, they may have some modifications or something like that. So the cutting process, the restriction process is not complete. And uh, when we add to insert the foreign DNA into the vector, sometimes the plasmid recirculate. So it won't be having uh, the foreign DNA. Other thing is that the process of transformation. Transformation is a transfer of DNA to the cell. 
So uh, this transfer process has a very low frequency. Uh, the, in the case of Escriche Coli, the maximum frequency uh, most of the studies reported was 1 is to 1000. If you take 1000 cells and do the transformation process the best way you can, only 1 out of 1000 will be transformed. Another 99, uh, like uh, 999 cells will be untransformed. So what I would like to show here, I have the plasmid DNA with the foreign insert and I have this Cushé coli. So I want to do, I am doing this uh, transformation. So what are the possible results? Yeah, what we need is uh, the cell which is transformed with the, the foreign DNA and the plasmid vector. But there will be cells which is transformed just with the plasmid DNA without the foreign DNA. It is because of the, so the uh, incompleteness of the restriction of vectors and recirculation factor and fail to insert the foreign DNA. So because of so many reasons, uh, the plasmid DNA can recirculate without the foreign DNA. And most of the cells, maybe 99.99% uh, of cells, uh, won't be getting uh, any DNA because uh, the transformation, the efficiency of transformation is not 100%. Most of the time, one out of 1000 will be transformed. Another uh, 999 will remain untransformed. So, uh, the, we, after the transformation process, we will get cells which is not transformed at all and the one which is transformed with the, uh, just the vector, not the foreign DNA and the cells which is transformed with the uh, recombinant plasmid. So, our motto or our aim is to select these cells from these old guys, okay, to distinguish or uh, isolate, purify, pur purely isolate the cell which is having the recombinant DNA. So how do we do that? For that, uh, the selector ma selection markers will help. The PBR322 is having two different selectable markers, the ambicillin resistant gene and a tetracycline resistant gene. This gene can actually help us to isolate the bacteria which has got the recombinant plasmid. So the method we are using here is insertional inactivation. So the point is like, if you are adding, inserting a foreign DNA, into the vector or into a particular gene, that gene will be disturbed. Uh, in the PBR322, we have, uh, yeah, I have the figure. So uh, in the PBR322, we have ambicillin resistant gene and tetracycline resistant gene. If you are inserting the foreign DNA into the tetracycline resistant gene, you, here you can see the BAMH1 resistant nucleus site and the foreign DNA can be cut with the BAMH1. So if you are inserting the foreign DNA into the tetracycline, uh, sorry, the tetracycline resistant gene, what happens? The tetracycline resistance will be lost because uh, it needs the full DNA or full protein, functional protein to uh, get the uh, tetracycline resistance. This, this gene will be inactivating the tetracycline. If you are adding some other sequence into the DNA, that DNA will be inactivated. They, it won't be producing this particular resistant genes anymore. So uh, when we inserting the DNA fragments into a gene, maybe the resistant genes, the resistant properties will be lost. So that's how we are actually, actually uh, selecting the cells, okay? The process is called the uh, insertional inactivation. We are inserting the foreign DNA into a gene and that's going to disturb the gene. So that's why we call it as insertional inactivation, okay? So the original plasmid have the ambicillin resistant gene and a tetracycline resistant gene. But after inserting the, in the foreign DNA into the tetracycline resistant gene, it will lose the tetracycline resistance, so it will become tetracycline sensitive and ambicillin gene is unaffected. So that's how we distinguish the cell which has got the plasmid DNA, intact plasmid DNA and the cell which has got the plasmid DNA with the DNA insert. So uh, here the same situation. So we have the plasmid DNA which is DNA insert, so three possibilities. And how do we distinguish these three possibilities? The first one is untransformed cells. The untransformed cells uh, don't have any plasmid, so they will be sensitive to both tetracycline and resistance. The cells we are using for this transformation is normal Escherichia coli. The normal Escherichia coli is actually sensitive to tetracycline and ampicillin. So if you add tetracycline or ampicillin in the medium, they will die. The second condition is the cells which has recircularized plasmid or the plasmid without the recombinant DNA. These cells have the ambicillin resistant gene and tetracycline resistant gene. But we don't want these cells because they have, uh, they don't have the foreign DNA. So the, their characteristics is like they are tetracycline resistant and ambicillin resistant, just opposite to the untransformed cells. And 
finally our choice of uh, our cells the cell we want the cells which is transformed with the recombinant uh, plasmid dna uh, they are actually uh, uh, they, the dna is actually inserted inside the tetracycline region so their tetracycline resistance is lost so these cells are tetracycline sensitive but they are resistant to ampicillin so we should have a method to select the cells which is tetracycline sensitive and ampicillin resistant okay so how do we do that so for that we are doing the replica plate so this is another representation so the things are same the untransformed cells are ampicillin sensitive and tetracycline sensitive the cells which is uh, transformed with the, with the, the plasmid is ampicillin resistant and tetracycline resistant and the recombinant plasmid cell is ampicillin resistant but tetracycline sensitive so what we are doing after the transformation the cells will be plated in a uh, petri plate this petri plate is actually having ampicillin not tetracycline it is having only ampicillin so as the medium is having ampicillin the uh, this cell the untransformed cells is not able to grow because they are ampicillin sensitive the second one is able to grow because they are ampicillin resistant and our dna insert is in the tetracycline resistant gene uh, so our ampicillin resistant gene in this particular case is active so they are also resistant to ampicillin so these two group the one is transformed with the unaffect uh, like uh, the just plasmid and the one is transformed with the recombinant plasmid will be able to grow in the plate which is having the ampicillin then what we will do is like we will do a replica plate into another plate this am and the second plate is having tetracycline okay so uh, the first plate is having ampicillin and second plate uh, we are doing the uh, replica plating i am sure that you know this uh, about this tetracycline so the tetracycline plate uh, we do a replica plating so after replica plating what we are looking at is like the cells growing in this medium in this medium the untransformed cells don't won't be able to grow because they are resistant to, uh, they are sensitive to tetracycline this one the second group the one with the recirculated plasmid is actually able to grow because they are resistant to tetracycline the cells which is the recombinant uh, plasmid is tetracycline sensitive because we added we inserted the foreign dna to the tetracycline resistant gene so what happened they become sensitive their tetracycline resistance has been lost so these cells are not able to grow in this culture so uh, the our the the one we are looking for do not grow in this culture so what we do we will actually compare these two cells two plates the plates with ampicillin and the plate with the tetracycline and we will identify you here you can see the dotted lines these colonies are actually missing here okay it was actually present there the cells are ampicillin sensitive Uh, ampicillin resistant but tetracycline sensitive that's what we are looking for so once we identify the cells in the replica we will identify the colonies and these colonies will be isolated and will be uh, transferred to the uh, conical flask for further studies so that's how we will do uh, select the pbr322 so it's a two step, step process first we will, uh, after transformation first to plate it in ampicillin resistant gene uh, other ampicillin containing plate and secondly we will plate it in a plate with the tetracycline uh so yeah uh, there are other methods have reported uh, for the selection of the recombinants uh, which is based on the ampicillin resistance so uh, the ampicillin cell uh, ampicillin actually ampicillin resistance is actually uh, by the presence of a beta lactamase gene so the beta lactamase gene can actually cleave the penicillin into penicillinic acid this penicillin and acid is uh, can be can combine with the iodine so we can incorporate this starch in the medium so that's a complicated process but uh, we can still use the iodine starch based methods for isolating the pbr322 uh, but most commonly based uh, used thing method is the uh, replica plating uh, i would like to say one more thing uh, in the particular example i am talking about inserting the gene into the tetracycline resistant gene so that's for why we plate first in the ampicillin plate then to tetracycline but you can actually do the opposite we can actually insert the gene into the ampicillin resistant gene so if you are inserting the foreign dna into the ampicillin uh, gene the ampicillin will be inactivated the whole process will be uh, like we can do in a reverse manner so the first plate will be the one with the tetracycline and the second plate will be the one with the ampicillin so uh, that's all uh, that's all for the pbr322 thank you so much